Hello there, students. How are you doing today? I hope your test went very smoothly today. If it didn't, don't forget, you have the option to do a retake. Make sure you read the syllabus on, uh, on about to test retakes. Um, but we're going to start our second chapter right now. Um, so this is, if, you, if you had a rough first chapter, today's the perfect time to recommit and, uh, and start watching these videos. Take those notes. Um, and show up at class prepared tomorrow to, uh, to talk about these things. So let's go ahead and get into our first lesson. But before that, I have a special treat for you. Check it out. My daughter drew this. And you might look at it and think it's just scribbles, but what I see is a comment. I see a beautiful red and purple comment that my two-year-old daughter drew. Isn't it lovely? Anyway, uh, because this is a uh, you know new artwork for my wall and everything, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the wall behind us so that we have uh, so that you guys can enjoy some nice pictures of, of comments and stuff uh, while, or at least in the background while we're doing these math lessons. All right, so today's lesson, um, we actually have a lot to talk about, um, but this is this is actually still review. This is is all stuff that you learned in Algebra One. Um, today we're going to be solving algebraic, oh, excuse me, so we're going to be solving absolute value, quadratic, and square root equations. Um, and part one is we're going to solve some absolute value equations. Uh, my first absolute value equation I'm going to solve is absolute value of x equals 3. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted right now. I'm noticing that up in the screen, I'm having a, it's i I've got like pencil marks. I think I, I think I can erase those. Pencil marks erased, go Elliot. All right, back to the problem. So we're talking absolute value here. Absolute value of some number is equal to three. What's interesting about these problems is that there's two solutions. Because when you think about it, the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3, but at the same time, the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. Just friendly reminder, absolute value, distance from 0. So the number 3 has a distance of 3 from 0, and the number negative 3 is a distance of 3 from 0. So that means that this problem has two solutions. On one hand, x is equal to 3, and on the other hand, x is equal to negative 3. And that's what you do if you have an absolute value uh, completely isolated by itself on one side of the equation. Let's take a look at example number 2. Oh, before that, though, I need to show you example 1b. Absolute value of x equals negative 3. So when is the absolute value of a number equal to negative 3? Well, once again, the definition of absolute value is distance from zero. Distance is always positive, so your distance from zero can never be negative. So if you ever have an absolute value equal to a negative number, you would answer no solution because there are no numbers in the universe that have an absolute value of a negative three or a negative number of any kind. All right, now to example two. Um, example two, suppose we had absolute value x minus eight equals three. Now, when you have the absolute value around what's around the function, around this x minus eight, you're actually going to apply the absolute value first, the exact same way that I did in example one, except instead of just being x by itself, the x minus eight will be equal to the positive three. Um, but then also the x minus 8 will be equal to a negative 3. And I think I, well, Elliot's being a little sloppy here with his math. If I go all the way back to example 1, you should put the word or between your two answers. x is equal to 3 or negative 3. So down here, it's either x minus 8 equals 3 or x minus 8 equals negative 3. And then you solve both equations individually. This one, I add 8 to both sides, and 3 plus 8 is 11. Or this one, I add 8 to both sides, and negative 3 plus 8 is 5. So this one has a solution of x equals 11, or 
x equals 5. Excellent. I have one more absolute value equation for you. Um, absolute value equation example number three. Let's say that I had two absolute value x plus seven. By the way, this is two times the absolute value x plus seven plus eight equals 20. Now you wanna break it off into that positive negative thing, but you can't do that until the absolute value has been completely isolated on one side of the equation. So in this one, the first thing I do is I'd subtract this eight from both sides, giving me two absolute value x plus seven equals 12. And then I divide both sides by the two and I end up with absolute value x plus seven equals six. Notice that this algebra that I'm doing is not affecting the inside of the absolute value at all. Now that the absolute value is then isolated, I can go ahead and do that positive negative uh, break thing. So I have x plus seven equals positive six, x plus seven equals negative six. Both of these equations, I need to um, isolate x by itself. So I subtract seven from both sides. And on one hand, I have x equals negative one or um, x equals negative 13. And I was being a little sloppy with my math again. I should have included the or in this step right here. And that, my students, is how you go about solving absolute value equations. Um, if you have any questions about this, we can talk about it first thing tomorrow in class. Um, part two of today's lesson is quadratic equations. Um, don't be intimidated by the word quadratic. Um, when you see quadratics, it usually means uh, y equals x squared type of equations. Equations that have an x squared in it. Um, and my first example is let's say that I have x squared equals 16. This is a lot like absolute value um, in that every single one of these problems is going to have two solutions or no solution. And it's possible for one solution, but most of these problems uh, will actually have two solutions to them. Um, and that's because 4 squared is equal to 16 and also negative 4 squared uh, is also negative 4 times negative 4. That is equal to 16. So with that said, you have a number squared equals 16. So if you undo the squaring, that means x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. Now one thing, one way to think about this is uh, if you just like to think of it another way, and this is the algebraically correct way to solve this problem, is a lot of people think of this as you have an x squared and you undo a squared by square rooting it, which is true. You go the square root of x squared will be equal to the square root of 16. Now the square root of x squared though, this is advanced math there. Most people I know do not do it this way. And that includes high school math teachers. But the square root of x squared happens to be absolute value of x. And the square root of 16 is 4. And then you can break it into your two solutions, x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. This is the mathematically correct way to solve this problem. But in all honesty, the work that I usually show is just like this. But if you want to be mathematically correct and awesome, you should uh, solve the problem this way. I hope you guys are having a great day today. Let's take a look at example two. Oh, no, no, no. Before example two, we should look at example 1b. Um, let's say uh, x squared equals negative 16. Well, if you ever square a number, kind of like we figured out up here, whenever you square a number, a positive times a positive is a positive. A negative times a negative is also a positive. So it is impossible to square a number and get a negative answer. So if you ever have a problem like this, you quickly answer with a no solution because you cannot square root a negative number. And then you move on to the next problem.
I had to get some more scratch paper, excuse me. Um, okay, so yeah, let's take a look at example two. In example two, we have x minus eight quantity squared equals 25. All right, a lot like absolute value problems. When you have this thing squared equals 25 and, and the thing on this, on this left side, the algebraic expression is all contained within these parentheses, you would go ahead and square root both sides. And because I'm a math teacher doing this online, I think I should do it correctly. So if I square root x minus 8 quantity squared and I square root 25, I will get the absolute value of x minus 8 equals 5. I then break that into two separate equations. So on one hand, absolute, or excuse me, just x minus 8 equals the 5. And on the other side, x minus 8 equals negative 5. Solve both, oops, don't forget the or. Solve both equations individually. On this hand, x equals 13. On this hand, x equals negative 5 plus 8, 3. Something doesn't feel right with my math. I just I just need to do a quick check. Um, I think it's all right. Yeah, mm -hmm. seems all right. I could always do a check plugging these two numbers into the original equation to check that they'll work. They will. That's the, how you solve this problem. Um, the only th the one thing I would normally do with my own individual work is I would normally just leave these two steps out and go straight from here to here. And if you mathematically are okay with that, I'm all right with that. But if you want to do this mathematically correctly, and you should in your practice, maybe you should solve it showing all of your work. One more example of this variety, number three. Um, let's say that I had four plus seven parentheses, x minus 2, close parentheses, squared, equals 32. Now, like I said in my previous problem, we cannot square root both sides until the, the thing that's being squared, the x minus 2, is completely isolated on this left side. So I'm first going to subtract 4 from both sides. And let's see, 32 minus 4 is 28. Then I'm going to divide both sides by that 7 giving me 4. And then this is when I go ahead and square root both sides. And, and I am gonna, I'm going to skip these, these couple steps here um, on this particular problem. So when I square root both sides, I get x minus 2 equals 2, or x minus 2 equals negative 2. And then both equations, I solve them for x. So x equals 4, or negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Oh, interesting. I got a 0 for an answer. Okay, that is quadratic equations. Now let's look at the exact opposite of quadratic equations which are square root equations. And square root equations will actually go a lot quicker. We will probably be done with this lesson in under five minutes, keeping it under 20 minutes which is a daily goal of mine. So square root equations Number one, square root of x equals nine. So on this one, there are, there's not going to be two solutions on this one. Uh, when we start graphing equations next week, uh, it'll, I'll have a better explanation for it then. But square root, how do you go about um, the opposite of square rooting a number? Is squaring a number. So for this particular problem, we're going to simply square both sides. The square root of x squared is x. 9 squared is 81, so x equals 81. Not positive negative 81, because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. All right, number two. Um, absolute value, not absolute value, square root x minus 5 equals 7. So the thing that is inside the square root, the x minus 5, it's entirely within that square root. So we're just going to go ahead and square both sides. The square root and the squared will beautifully cancel out, leaving us with x minus 5. On the other side, 7 squared is 49. Add 5 to both sides, and x equals 54.
one more example, everybody, and then we're done. Number three. Three square root x plus four equals 18. Now, you can square both sides if you want to right now, but a lot of people make a mistake if they do that. Um, I'm going to try to urge you to not square both sides until you've isolated the square root, like in uh, example two. So in this particular problem, that would involve dividing both sides by three first. And if I did that, I'd get square root x plus four equals 18 divided by three, which is six. Then I square root both sides, and I get x plus four equals 36. I should probably show that, I would imagine. Squared, squared. Then I just need to subtract four from both sides, and x ends up equaling 32. And that's uh, my answer to number three. And that are that is square root equations. So in a review today, um, we did so we solved some absolute value equations, we solved some quadratic equations, and we solved some square root equations. Um, before I leave you, today we stumbled upon Elliot's first pet peeve, and it will drive Elliot insane. And let's just quickly review that that if you ever take the square root of both sides, you need to give two answers. So if you square root both sides in this problem, you get four or negative four, two solutions. I can't tell you how many quizzes, tests, whatever I've graded. People always forget about the positive negative, and that is pet peeve number one on Elliot's list. Um, so don't be that person. When you square root both sides of an equation, please don't forget about the positive negative. It is my last math thing I have to say. I just need to get over to the screen so I can make Elliot big again. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you had a self a good time learning about these three different types of equations. If you did not write these notes out, please print a copy of these notes so that we have something to talk about in class today. I hope you have yourself a fantastic evening. Yay. And I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye.